so here's the computer. Uh, moving my lamp and my uh, salt crystal, my pictures, my nieces, you know. The the nieces and nephew. Um, and this is the computer right here. Let me uh, turn this around. Shed some light on the subject. It is, me. Come here. There it is. Again, right? Perfect. Shine a little light in there. Maybe we'll be able to get a better uh, view as to what's going on. A little bit. So we have a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of kit in here. A lot of people ask me what I use, so hopefully I can shed some light on that. Let's start right here at our processor, right there. Alrighty, so here's the processor. The board is an ASUS 990FX Sabre Tooth. Um, the uh, processor is an AMD 9590 8-core processor. Runs pretty hot. Requires a lot of juice to get the thing moving, and uh, but it is a beast. It is very, very powerful, uh, and that is cooled. Uh, that is liquid cooled by a Corsair H105, which I have sitting right down here. You can see the uh, the cables going from the processor all the way down and around to our radiator right here, and we'll be getting to that a little bit later. We'll be able to see a better view of that. So there it is, right there. I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, these guys, we have uh, 64, sorry, 32 gigs of Kingston HyperX Beast uh, RAM, it's pretty excellent stuff, um, and then uh, memory wise I have three, three terabyte hard drives right here sitting on their end, um, managing all of my data, yeah, don't have an SSD, that's uh, probably the next on the list of things to do. Uh, next up we'll go to the um, video card which I have right here, that is my uh, ASUS Strix 970, GTX 970, and as you can see it is at rest, uh, you cannot see the fans from here, but uh, it is at rest, the fans are not spinning, uh, the thing is a beast and it runs very very cool, it uh, hardly ever heats up. I do have an expansion slot for another, another uh, video card if I so desire. Um, but uh, for the time being, uh, that is not uh, that's not filled. So there you go. Uh, that little green light right here, it's very hard to see. But that little green light here is my capture card that's sticking out the back. You can see uh, the bracket right there. Capture card, there's the back of it leaning on its side right there. Um, that is the capture card that I currently use, and that is an a uh, Avermedia, Avermedia TV. Um, game broadcaster, which is what I currently use. And then uh, down beneath uh, this cabinet here, I have my power supply. It's really ugly, and it is a cable management nightmare, so I'm not going to show it to you. Uh, but uh, directly underneath that is a um, Cooler Master V850, 850 watt power supply. Uh, powers this huge beast. It is uh, more than enough. Uh, a lot of power, enough room for me to add another 970 if I so choose. And uh, yeah, also beneath there, I have an optical drive. Um, and uh, just another high-speed 3.0 connection uh, that leads out through the front here. So if I have to connect anything real quick uh, in the cabinet itself, I can just go ahead and plug that in. So, yeah, and uh, I'm going to move the camera now and get you a little bit different uh, view of the setup inside the cabinet. So, one second. so this is the view of the computer from where I sit uh, at my desk. Um, gets you just a little bit better view of uh, the RAM. That's the Kingston HyperX Beast there. That's the cooler block for the Corsair, the uh, 9590 uh, AMD processor. Here's my Strix card. It's got this sexy black shroud on the back end of it to make it look nice in that big-ass heat pipe right on top. There is my very technical clothespin, keeping uh, two wires apart from making a connection, and my uh, capture card sitting right back there. And then now you can see the... Uh, the Corsair H105 is sitting there. I have these two vents on either side of the cabinet here. Uh, you can kind of see one peeking out right there, back behind. But on the cabinet itself, beneath the uh, the actual computer, um, whether or not you can see it will be um, a test. Uh, but right up there, we have four. You can do Noctua NF14 fans. We have four of them. We got two on this side and two on the other side. Uh, you can actually see the connection right there. That that uh, wire with the brown tag on it is actually feeding those, um, and that is uh, keeping this entire cabinet here cool. 
That's also what makes my uh, makes my office nice and toasty. Um, actually, if we can uh, come over here. So what I can show you is right here on the side of the cabinet here, down below, you can see the two Noctua NF14 fans on this side, uh, as well as my pub glass beneath. I have to hang that up. So that's a little a little difficult to see as well, but there you go, a little more sharpness there. But I have some mesh mesh covering uh, that, so no one can stick their fingers in because I have nieces and nephews uh, and animals. I don't want to have an animal stick a nose in there and get a whisker caught. That would be very nice. Um, so that's to protect them, uh, and then the other one exhausts. Uh, oh, sorry, draws in from underneath the desk on this side. So yeah. But that is, uh, that is the Empire computer in all of its glory. And uh, stay tuned, and we'll talk about uh, peripherals. Alrighty, peripheral number one. We have the Razer Black Widow Ultimate Keyboard. Uh, this does not have the uh, all the crazy stuff on it, but it does have the five macro keys on the left-hand side. And uh, is a full 10-key uh, added keyboard. It's got the green backlighting. This isn't the chroma. Um, which I do like that you can uh, turn this up or down um, based off of your preference. Uh, sometimes when I go to bed I like to turn it off or turn it on low just so I can find it, but uh, while I am live I do keep it lit up um, as high as it'll go because um, it does help me find keys out of my periphery. It does help me find keys out of my periphery just a little bit easier, which I do enjoy. Um, I like the keyboard. Uh, this is not the one made with green switches. This is not the old one. This is the one with the newer uh, Chinese-made switches, I believe, or are they, yes, I believe they're Chinese-made switches. Um, I have had a couple switches go out, as you can see, uh, the light on my X key has burnt out, and my number pad uh, doesn't quite work the way it's supposed to, and oddly enough, my F5 key has stopped detecting key presses. So I am in the market for another keyboard, I'm thinking about getting a Corsair K70, um, I would like to get a Corsair K70 with brown switches. Is, uh, my dream keyboard gets up a little bit quieter. I still want the mechanical feel. I still like the uh, the old school uh, keyboard style typing, um, but I do enjoy the keyboard, so it is a nice one, uh, and I would recommend it for others. Alrighty, next up we have our mouse. Uh, the mouse that I use is the Logitech G602. I love this mouse. I really do. Uh, this one is battery powered. This is not a rechargeable one. The rechargeable one does lose battery pretty quickly. Um, this one on the bottom side here, um, pardon the dirt and grime, does have a battery case that you can pop open nice and easy. Um, and then underneath we have uh, two double A's that sit in there and these have an insane amount of battery life on them. They are fantastic. Uh, I did purchase this mouse uh, factory refurbished. Um, these slippy pads on the bottom are extremely slick and they are excellent for gaming. What I like is I do have large hands and I do enjoy the fact that this has a thumb rest on it and you can uh, let your fingers uh, slip off the end there. Okay, so while I game, I do have a bit of a claw grip, but mice sit pretty pretty small in my hand, most of them do. So the fact that uh, Logitech did extend the mouse, uh, the buttons here is absolutely wonderful. I love it to death, and it does keep my hand up off of the mouse pad, which makes me very, very happy. So I do enjoy the Logitech G602. It is a fantastic mouse. I do recommend it for everybody else if, uh, if you're looking for a mouse. Uh, do not let the wireless discourage you. Um, it doesn't, uh, it does have a pretty long throw, uh, but uh, to reference uh, my keyboard, which I was talking about earlier, um, the keyboard does have a USB pass-through on this side right over here, which does allow you to put that uh, transmitter for the mouse right in there, and that is absolutely wonderful. So, Logitech G602. I'm going to cover this briefly. This is a, uh, the workhorse of my system. If I ever use a gamepad to play a game, I uh, use the uh, wired Xbox 360 controller. Uh, the Wired is the cheapest one you can get. I got this one for less than $20 at uh, Best Buy. It is literally just a USB Xbox 360 controller. No frills, no fancy. Everyone asks, is it just plug and play? Yes. If it doesn't work with a game, it's probably because the game doesn't have a plug-in that is to detect it. So please know that. But uh, yes, this is a fantastic controller. 
it's uh, very simple to use, very excellent. Um, if you don't have one for your system, you ought to. All right, there you go. This is the Logitech 3D Pro joystick. This was recently uh, replaced in my arsenal of toys. However, I felt the need to cover it. Um, I saw a lot of negative reviews on Amazon for this joystick. Um, it is exactly what you pay for. It is $17 used. It is a workhorse. It's, there's no force feedback, but there is a crap ton of buttons for what you get. You get four on top, you get a nice little hat switch, you got a secondary weapon switch there. You got your main trigger in the front, which is uh, very responsive, very excellent. Then you have a nice little bank of six buttons right down here and a throttle right on the back side. The throttle I didn't use, but uh, it was sensitive, it was responsive. I tried to use it there for a little bit and just decided it wasn't uh, the feel that I was looking for. But uh, for $17, if you want a joystick, you can't beat it. This thing is fantastic. It's lightweight, it's small. You can easily wrap it up and throw it somewhere uh, to keep it out of the way. And uh, it is fantastic. I love it to death. So if you're looking for a nice, cheap joystick, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, test to see if that's what you want. And for $17, if you don't like it, you can return it. And uh, if you do like it, then you can hang on to it and you have a $17 joystick that uh, will definitely uh, fill out the rest of your days there. So the, um, the hat switches on the top, I wanted to make a comment. All of these have a nice little rubber coating on them that make them really delightful to hang on to. And um, I have big hands. It's uh, I have an issue with uh, most joysticks being too small. Um, this one feels very, very good in your hand. Um, I am double jointed. The only problem is most of these buttons I did have to press with my knuckle because my thumb is too long to actually reach back and press them. So I would have to let go in order to press them this way, but I would use my knuckle to press them like this and my knuckle to press this button on the side. So if you do have smaller hands, this may fit a little bit better, but I did enjoy the feel of this in my hand. The overall size of the stick itself is really good and uh, I still, uh, still recommend it. So there is the joystick that I used to use. Ta-da! Alrighty, next up we have the mess that is my microphones. Uh, as you can see, I do have, um, I put down some green screen fabric there just so that uh, I could cover up the mess that is um, my desk so you can see the microphones apart just a little bit better. But I do have a mount here, which goes back, pardon the light, uh, which goes back and connects to the back side of my desk over there. So when in, uh, not in use, they do sit above that uh, monitor there on the far left side. But in terms of uh, the microphones themselves, I'll just to give you an idea, this is 2.57 p.m. Not a.m. <coughs> Took off work today because I'm still sick. All right. So utilize a pop filter. If you have any kind of side address mic, including the Blue Yeti, you need to have a pop filter. Blue Yeti says it has an integrated pop filter. It sucks. I can't tell you how many casters I watch where they're still popping their consonants. Um, so <clears throat> you either have to de-breath them, which is hard and makes you sound funky, or spend, what, 10 bucks and get yourself a pop filter. Better yet, how I started is I got myself a cheap little cross-stitching hoop and stretched a pair of pantyhose over it. Yes, that does work. This is the same exact thing. It is basically a cross-stitch hoop. You have a little tensioner down here and an inner ring right here, which pops out and has basically, look at that basically pantyhose fabric on it. Oh my god. No, so just take the time, get the equipment you need, make sure you can uh, stream chat and don't worry about it. You can talk and not worry about popping. That's the best part about it. Make sure we're focused up here, sorry about that. So, behind that one, I have uh, this microphone down here, that is my Audio-Technica AT2020 USB. Um, it is my USB microphone. That is the microphone I use to talk to people in Skype or in TeamSpeak or through voice chat in a game. I utilize that because I can separate it from my board because uh, I run every sound that you hear through my board. So if I were to chat with somebody in a, in a like TeamSpeak, for example, um, if I were listening to music and talking to them or playing a game, uh, they would hear the game, the music, myself, and them talking back to them, which would be annoying as hell. So I separate out a separate microphone, which is the AT2020 USB, which is the microphone I used to use exclusively uh, and mix live on my computer. It's a decent microphone, great place to start, it's cheap. I got a kit, so uh, for 100 bucks I was able to get the microphone, shock mount, uh, floor stand, and uh, desk mount 
for a hundred dollars. Now that's a fantastic price uh, on that. It's a great microphone. And then the uh, the that is the gray microphone here. The black microphone up top. That is an Audio Technica AT2035. That is a large condenser side address single cardioid. Um, it is a directional microphone used for uh, voiceover. That is what you hear me speaking through. It is an XLR microphone. So as you can see here, we have the large XLR connector, which means you need to get yourself a board that uh, handles XLR input um, in order to use it. Also, this microphone will need phantom power. So make sure that uh, your um, make sure that your board has phantom power integrated into it, or make sure you get yourself a preamp that uh, supplies phantom power. Uh, because the microphone does need to be powered in order for it to pick up voice. So there you go. Those are the microphones. Next up, we'll move along to the board. Alrighty. This is my XLR board that I use for everything that you hear on um, Twitch. This is the Behringer Xenix X1204 USB. So this is the uh, X1204 USB FX board. This does have the integrated FX driver, um, which is what this little digital readout is for here. It tells you which effect I'm using. This is the echo I use uh, to welcome new followers, that sort of thing. I drive it off of this volume knob here. Uh, it's That's why you see me look over every time I'm turning this up to half and then turning it back down. It is manual, but you know what? It gives me a lot of control and it provides the sound that I want. So that's, uh, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a, a priss when it comes to that kind of stuff. I have what I like to hear and uh, won't settle for anything else. So, um, so everything else, this is the microphone that you hear me talking on. Uh, these three channels are dead. There's nothing hooked up to them yet, but they will soon. Uh, anytime I have a guest over or anything else like that, they will be patched in through these three here or if I want to hook up anything else. Uh, this slider here, channel 5 slash 6, is connected up here. This is my computer sound, so this is any video games that I'm playing, uh, follower notifications, all this stuff comes through this line here. This line over here is my laptop. This is where music is played from. Uh, I also have, I'm going to be switching, uh, this will become my streaming PC when the time comes. And that channel will supply that, and uh, I will be, uh, I will be utilizing, uh, that for music and follower alerts and my bot and most sounds will be coming from that system. Um, this channel here will purely be for games and this one will be for team speak, sound, music, everything else. Um, just to kind of spread the load out in terms of um, uh, resource management on the current computer that I'm using. These are the main two sliders for mains. This is what gets pumped out of the back. This is uh, left and right audio here. Um, we want to use those. Uh, for that. So these two cables go to the laptop, these two cables go to my computer, and this black cable here, which you really can't see until I put my fingers behind it, this goes to my headphones, which does loop behind the desk and then dump out just underneath right over here. Uh, so I can use uh, headphones that don't have a very long throw so that I can uh, hear what I'm doing. So yeah. But this is the uh, Behringer Xenix X1204 USB FX board. And uh, if you have any questions about settings that I utilize, I can do another video that's a little more intensive. Uh, I don't really do anything crazy in terms of audio balancing for each individual channel. They're all roughly the same. Um, I do uh, boost certain things. I do apply compression on my voice, so if I ever get loud or yell or something along those lines, uh, I will make sure that I don't blow your eardrums out, which is good. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, compression compresses everything. Uh, it compresses low band as well as high band. So, there is a bit of an attack volume issue, so if it's quiet for an extended period of time and you start talking normally, there it will be loud initially and then you will hear it get quiet again. So uh, just a warning there for anyone who's exploring a new board, if you have a tendency to yell, if you have a tendency to be uh, loud on cast, uh, that's fine. What you might want to end up doing is think about projecting overall, be a louder speaker, even in a normal voice, and uh, just uh, turn down the volume on the actual mic itself from here would probably be the best uh, solution for that. So, yes. But there you are. There's the Xenix X1204 USB FX board. Don't go very far. We are right back with the HP laptop that I use. This is the uh, laptop that I have on cast that I use to run music. As you can see, it's up right now with my sign-off tunes clockwork highlighted. Eh, eh. 
Uh, this is uh, an older, um, <laughs> it's very old, it's running Windows 7. This is my uh, HP Pavilion G6 laptop. It does exactly what I need it to, which is play music here. It runs my OnkBot, which is there, and runs uh, my um, dashboard, which is right there, as well as uh, I do watch Rise Up TV on there uh, as well. Sometimes I'll play a couple different uh, streams on the laptop just so I can listen to those while I'm working on the main computer, just to take some of the stress off. <clears throat> but um, I, uh, I basically use it as my bot computer, and. Um, in the future, hopefully this will be a secondary PC as opposed to a laptop, because right now uh, there's not a whole lot I can do with this. I did try to do like a screen region capture, so maybe I can put the notifications over on this uh, laptop, but alas, it doesn't want to cooperate for right now, so I'm going to have to do a little bit more work regarding that. But uh, for now, it does a great job running music and running my bot, which is just two more processes that I can take off my main computer, as well as running my dashboard and monitoring uh, my channel to see where my delay is at and uh, everything else. Um, but yeah, that's my computer, my uh, laptop. Absolutely wonderful, love it to death. This is the AOC 27 inch IPS panel. Uh, I've got two of these. Uh, the 27 inch panels are wonderful. Uh, they have a very narrow bezel and a low power draw, which is good. The refresh rate was fine for video gaming. Uh, it's not the best. Uh, the color is uh, very deep, but also not as vivid. So if you're doing graphic design, let me cut that uh, glare off a little bit. So if you're doing graphic design or something along those lines, this is probably not the monitor for you. But if you're looking for something that's efficient, doesn't draw a whole lot of power, is beautiful and has a thin bezel for a multi-monitor setup. I have my main two right there in the center and right here on the right hand side. Uh, they are great. Uh, they are a little bit on the pricey side. This is the biggest thing I splurged on in my setup. Um, they're uh, just over 250 bucks a piece. And I am planning on getting a third. Uh, so if we just continue on with our monitors, do 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 Never mind the uh, light here. Let me just scoot that out of the way. I wasn't planning on doing this, but it's easier. Uh, that is an HP 22 inch monitor that comes with, um, or I'm sorry, 24, no it's 22, that's 22. That's an HP 22 inch monitor that came with my original slimline, HP Pavilion slimline computer that I bought ages ago. Um, but it's still a fantastic display. Uh, they're still priced pretty high because they're good displays for the money. Uh, the color on that monitor is very vivid. It's very deep. Uh, I use it for um, doing Photoshop and graphic design, honestly. Uh, just because the color is a little more accurate. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. I use that uh, while I'm streaming. I use that as my preview panel. And uh, also my monitor. Beaks worth on that monitor and uh, audio levels across the entire PC. The central monitor is used for games, the right side monitor is used for follower alerts, uh, treat stream alerts, and uh, let's see here, my Twitter feed, everything else. And then the top screen here, which is a 42 inch, uh, I'm sorry, 36 inch flat screen monitor. Uh, it's, a, it's a Westinghouse television is what it is. Uh, I got that from a buddy who was moving, didn't want to keep it. I was his buddy, so he said I could have it. That's the only reason I have a monitor that large. Uh, but it is only a 720p monitor. So what I do is I monitor chat on that one. Occasionally off-screen, off-cast, I will watch a stream up there, just because I can blow it up nice and large and uh, watch it like TV. Or I'll watch a movie up there, hence the DVD player that's also hooked up to my system. So uh, that's what I utilize that one for. And uh, it is... Um, it's nice. I like having the large display so I can monitor uh, chat a lot easier. It's easier just to look up and glimpse uh, and snag what I need to and uh, continue playing. So that's uh, that's excellent as well. More hardware. This is the Logitech G930 wireless headset. This is uh, my these are my daily drivers. This is what I use off cast so I can uh, eliminate the in ear headphones that I use. Um, these are wonderful. Uh, the microphone on them is a little weak, but uh, that's to be expected with a headset, so I'm not really upset about that. Um, it does the job, but it is not going to sound like professional audio, that much I can tell you right now. This is my set of Triton Kunai's. Uh, these are nice uh, affordable headsets uh, with a audio jack. It does have an integrated microphone. I use this whenever I'm playing on PS4. Uh, these are great for being able to talk to your team. The sound quality on them is good. The microphone is of decent quality. They're not anything fantastic, but they're not piles of poo. 
Um, so I think that says something. They're comfortable to wear for long durations. Uh, I think they're really under, uh, excellent. So uh, for 50 bucks, you really can't be, or I think they're down to 40 now. Uh, for 40 bucks, this is a grand, fantastic daily driver. You can also plug them into your phone. They're compatible for any audio device. Uh, the noise canceling on these is not as good as the um, Logitech G930 but they are still pretty good. I do enjoy these. I let uh, Poop Shoe use them occasionally if she needs a good set of headphones to cancel out some sound of, you know, me casting and being obnoxious when she wants to watch a movie. So, <laughs> either way, uh, Triton Kunai's good PlayStation gaming headset, in my opinion. Okay, these are my in-ear monitors that I use on a daily basis while streaming. Uh, these are the Shure C215s. Uh, they are fantastic little earphones. If you are not used to studio grade in-ear headphones, um, I do suggest uh, wearing them for only a couple hours at a time. Uh, they can get a little what's known as heavy in your ear, uh, so that when you take them out, um, your ears feel kind of stuffy. It's a, it's a weird it's a weird sensation, but it feels like your ears are a little swollen uh, because they've been so sound deprived for a while, and because the headphones themselves are a little heavy. Um, but uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to. However, they are fantastic. The dynamic quality of them is really wonderful. They have two drivers in each of them. And the uh, earbuds are detachable themselves from the actual cables. They also have these rigid sleeves here. Let me focus up, sorry about that. They also have these rigid sleeves here on the top which uh, help to conform them to uh, the design of your ear. You can also uh, disconnect them from the earbud themselves for repairs, replacements, uh, that sort of thing, or if you get uh, a new headphone that you'd like to attach. Uh, but that is lovely, and I do enjoy that aspect of them. But they are great. The sound quality on them is uh, top notch, and uh, they're excellent. They have this really nice uh, steel braided cable inside, uh, which keeps the uh, rigidity where it needs to be. And uh, they've also got uh, little pieces of copper woven into there as well. It gives it a very cool design and uh, these are very nice. The Also the uh, cable on them is very long. They can res uh, reach a very uh, long distance which is nice uh, for streaming and also for uh, if you're walking around the city, um, at least for me in Chicago because it gets noisy. If you're walking around the city you can easily put these um, underneath the jacket and have them run down into a pocket or into an inner pocket uh, to keep them safe and keep them out of the elements while you're walking around. So. Sure, C two fifteens. Yes, I am going to cover these. I wear these pink headphones quite a bit on stream. These are amazing. These are Philips headphones. I think I want to say they're like twenty dollars per pair. They are cheap and they are lovely. Uh, if they get broken or if a cat munches on these, trust me, I know all about that. These are excellent. They have an inline microphone to talk on your cell phone to talk to your loved ones or yell at a neighbor who let the dog poop on your lawn. I don't know, I'm making shit up now. Uh, but these are awesome. <clears throat> They're cheapies. They're daily drivers. I use them every single day to and from work. Uh, I always get the pink pair because I like it. And uh, yeah, they're absolutely, they're, they're wonderful. They're Sony's. Anyway, moving on. I guess this is a peripheral. That's my PS4. Hooray! I got the wide edition on the release of Destiny. Compliments of Nuthawk ATX. Much love to him. Thank you for that again. And uh, the little black box on top that's peeking out is my HDMI splitter slash switcher. So there's that. I use that for uh, capture as well. We also now have a new member to the Farrington household. Uh, I was about to pop in. Let me put my top hat on. Top hat! Please excuse my sick appearance. We have a new member to the Farrington household, which is the new HOTA system. I'll share that with you right now. All we have to do is slide these out of the way here. And then... Yes, and yes, they are beautiful! Compliments of Dread Pirate Duo, who got these for us. Fantastic, this is going to be a game changer for Elite Dangerous. But I'm gonna install these, we're gonna go into super fast forward mode, uh, so you can see exactly what they look like when they're in. So, here we go.
So there you go, a little involved, but at the end of the day, it is a great setup. I love it to death. I built the desk, uh, I built the desk. I built the desk myself, so I don't mind drilling holes and applying these directly to the desk. It also doesn't affect the quality or uh, integrity of the desk itself. So here is number one. That is the throttle on the left hand side, and there is the uh, joystick on the right hand side. They're angled out slightly to uh, accommodate the way I like to hold them, uh, and they are wonderful. It gives me a straight up view, fantastic view of the main monitor for games like Elite Dangerous. So, there's peripherals. Next up, we'll do the steering wheel. Alrighty, now I'm going to show you the Logitech G27 racing wheel that I use on top of the stand that I have it on. Uh, pardon me while I get out from behind the camera. Oh, Jesus. That ruin everything. Nope. There you go. So please excuse the joystick that I have here. But all we have to do is slide it out. Lift up on this guy here. Get this bad boy up the way we like it. Plug this here. Lift up. And just like that, we are ready to play Hero Truck Simulator. So we have the steering wheel here. Uh, this is the USB cable right here, which I just hook up to one of these USBs up there. And there you have it. We are ready to drive, and that sits uh, honestly pretty, pretty close to the chair. One thing I do like to do before I start is slide it in so it's up against the desk. Gets me nice and close so I can read you guys, and centers me up in the web, uh, webcam perfectly. So there you go. That's the steering wheel. Alrighty, so there you go. That was the tour of my system and my peripherals. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions for me, please post them down in the comments box. I've also linked, uh, dropped a couple of links down there. Uh, don't forget to check out my Amazon affiliate store that has links to every single thing that you've seen here today. Uh, so if you have anything that interests you or uh, anything you want to see how much it costs, price it out or get a, uh, a version of it yourself, you're more than welcome to do that uh, through my affiliate store. I get a little kickback from that as well, but the uh, cost of the product does not go up at all. So that's there as a resource for you guys in case you want to get anything that I'm currently using. But uh, yeah, thanks again for joining me. Uh, once again, I've been Farrington Empire. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.